What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Resurrect. Today we're talking about Chinese diagnostic scan tools that are clones. We're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of these devices and we're going to debunk some of the myths behind them. Now what exactly are we talking about with OEM scan tools? Well these are scan tools that your local dealership would use for their brand. This is not typically the type of tool that your local indie mechanic will be using. Usually they might be using some type of snap-on diagnostic system or maybe a Bosch system, uh, but not this kind of stuff. And the reason why is for a lot of brands uh, to use the diagnostic software, you would need some type of login that only your local dealership would be able to provide to their technicians. So this is not typically available for the aftermarket world. So in China, what they do is they clone these devices. A lot like here, let's say you love to sew. Well, if you love to sew and you have a sewing machine, you can go down to the local Joanne Fabrics and get yourself a pattern and you can make yourself a one-piece suit with a lobster print on it. Well, the same thing happens in China, except the sewing machines are factories and the patterns are 10,000 page PDF documents that have nothing but schematics. So the bar is a little bit higher over there. So we're gonna take a look at some of these tools and we're gonna see what the deal is with these things. And I'm gonna to explain to you a general overview of these tools. We're not gonna do any actual diagnostics today, but I'm gonna show you a little bit about what the functions are, some of the pros and cons. So in front of me, we have some of these tools. Uh, we've got here a Ford VCM2. So this is very similar to what your Ford dealership might use at the Ford dealer. Um, we've got here a Tech2. Now this is an older model of what GM techs would use. Um, this is good up till about 2013 and currently GM uses something called MDI which interfaces with your computer and actually they have to log into a website for it to work. But this is an older sort of standalone tool that you could do a lot of diagnostics with as well. Uh, here we have an, old, an older version of a Mercedes-Benz diagnostic tool. This is a Mercedes C4. Currently, I believe they use a C5. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but this is an older version of the OEM diagnostic tool they would use. And this here is a Honda HDS. Now this does not look like the tools that I've seen being used at the Honda dealership. It's a little bit different, uh, but the, uh, inter the interface that you use on the computer is very similar to what they would use. Now, most of these are just interfaces. This is a standalone tool, but the rest of these are interfaces, so you have to use them with laptops. Uh, you have to use some sort of software on different computers. So as you can see, I have a bunch of old, I have a bunch of old laptops that I use these tools with. Now, where exactly can you buy a tool like this? Well, they're sold all over the internet. They're sold on eBay, they're sold on Amazon, they're sold on AliExpress, and various OEM diagnostic scan tool websites that are typically based out of China. However, there are some US sellers that do deal with this stuff. Now, a couple tools that I don't have, clones that I've used in the past, I've used a Chrysler WeTech, and I've also used a BMW diagnostic tool um, that I don't currently have those two anymore. Um, currently, the best BMW tool that I've seen out there is the ICOM system, a clone of that system, um, but I don't have one of those. Um, I'd like to get another WeTech, but I don't have one either. Um, and there's a few different uh, out there, but I've never used any other clone diagnostic systems out there, like for Toyota or Hyundai or Kia uh, or any other brand, I have not used those systems. One thing I will say, if you are working on Volkswagen or Audi, the clones are just not worth it. Go ahead and get yourself a genuine Ross Tech cable. I wanna say they're about $300, but the software is awesome. You can do all types of coding and diagnostics with it, and you're just about at that dealer level outside of copying keys. Now this interface right here, the Ford VCM, this is good for Ford as well as Mazda vehicles. Um, so this is a kind of a multi-purpose. There may be some other things you could do with it as well, but uh, this GM Tech 2, this is good for GM cars. Um, this is also good for Saab as well as Holden cars, uh, such as the Pontiac G8 and the Pontiac GTO. Now sometimes, depending on what car you're working on, you will have to swap out this card right here. But the way it's configured right now, it's set up for GM, uh, Cadillac, Buick, 
uh, all of the major GM brands. This one, of course, works with Honda and Acura, and uh, this tool will work with Mercedes-Benz, uh, it's gonna work with your smart cars, as well as any Sprinter van. The Chrysler WeTech tool, which I do not have, that one's going to work with Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Fiat, as well as Alfa Romeo. Now, I have heard some myths about these devices saying that if you hook this up to your car and you try to read your ECU, it's just going to brick it or destroy it. And I'll have to say that I do not believe that myth at all because I've used these devices between various different brand vehicles hundreds of times and that's never ever happened to me. Now, the only time I could see this happening maybe is if you're trying to reprogram some module uh, and maybe something happens, you lose a data connection or you lose power then maybe I could see that happening. The times that I have reprogrammed with some of these devices, that has not happened to me, uh, but I think that using any type of tool, any tool that is legit or not, whether it be OEM or whether it be some aftermarket tool, I think you always run the risk of potentially bricking that module. So I think that is kind of a myth behind these devices. Maybe there's some people out there that have bricked their modules, in my experience, that just not has happened yet for me. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about some of the pros of using something like this. The pros are, as far as diagnostic procedures go, you're not gonna have anything else available on the aftermarket that's gonna give you all the features and functions uh, that the OEM scan tool will have. So this is gonna have the most amount of, of tests and tools and you're gonna get be able to get into every single module you can actually, on some vehicles or most vehicles, you can turn one specific headlight on or you can turn one light in the back on. If you're trying to do some diagnostics, you can turn one wiper on, stuff like that. Um, also, on some of the tools, I have actually successfully reprogrammed new modules. Um, I've also reprogrammed keys on some cars. Uh, I did that with the Chrysler WeTech, that I had an older one that I had. However, uh, now as um, things are going more online with all of the uh, manufacturers, uh, some of these features are going to be less and less available. And another thing I will say, uh, I've bought many different versions of these tools over the years and I have not received one defective unit. That doesn't mean they don't exist, but I would say that the quality is fairly consistent, uh, especially if you're buying from a reputable seller. Another pro of these tools is the cost. Now the cost of these units is way less than the actual tool, of course. Now most of these uh, OEM tools on the market, these are gonna be in the thousands of dollars. Uh, I would say the more expensive ones would be something like this. Uh, these are definitely uh, probably in the $2,500 range new and something like this as well. So these are fairly expensive units. However, sourced out of China, these are only a few hundred bucks. So um, out of all these, I would say this is the most expensive one. Um, maybe these two, of course, they, they're a little bit more, there's a little bit more to them. Um, these here are roughly $100 to $200. These are fairly inexpensive. Another tip that I'll give you is if you choose to ever buy one of these, make sure you buy them from a seller who sells DHL. When you're getting stuff from China, any other way of receiving something is going to take an eternity. So if you order DHL, you could probably get these items within two or three days. Uh, versus if you don't order from DHL, it could be several months before you see your item. Now we're gonna talk about some of the cons of having a device like this. Uh, well, some of the cons are that these devices are not updatable. So when you get them from China, they usually come with some sort of software and that software is stuck in that version. You will not be able to up update that software. Uh, however, if you buy the OEM, obviously you're gonna be able to have that device for a long period of time because their software will be updatable. Another con to having a device like this is a lot of OEMs require some type of online login when you're reprogramming modules or programming keys or doing anything out, outside of the realm of just regular diagnostics. So that is something you are probably not going to be able to obtain an actual login for the OEM website. Um, now, even if you did have a login, a lot of the manufacturers of these devices will tell you not to log in because it's possible that your actual unit could be bricked. So that's uh, one huge disadvantage to using something like this. You are not gonna be able to have many of the features that your local dealership would have. 
Another con to these devices is that they can be very frustrating to use. There is practically no support for these devices. Uh, and if you do get support, it's going to be from someone who probably doesn't speak English very well. So it's going to be very frustrating from time to time if you do have some sort of technical issue with the device. So for example, uh, this uh, Mercedes diagnostic tool that I have here, uh, for many months I was not able to get this to work. There were some settings that needed to be set up properly and I had to spend a ton of time doing a bunch of online research uh, in order to figure out uh, that I had set things up properly and eventually I did get it to work. So, but that is a huge con because when you're trying to work on a car, obviously you want everything to just hook up and work. You don't have time to be messing around with your diagnostic tool. And unfortunately that is a downside to almost all these tools. There's going to be a huge learning curve on trying to figure out how to get these things to work properly. That being said, there are some sellers that are a little bit better than others and do offer some type of support for these products, but none of the support for these products is going to be anywhere near the level of support you would get if you bought the actual OEM tool. Another con to these devices is that usually when you buy this, you're going to get a disc uh, that you'll have to install on the computer to work with some of these interfaces. And that disc will be a blank disc that somebody copied some software on. And basically that is going to be a hacker's paradise. So if you ever use these devices, I would not suggest that you use this on your personal laptop. Um, I only use these devices on older laptops that I no longer use for personal stuff and stuff that I do not connect to the internet. So these are just really old laptops that I've got used on eBay or at pawn shops or from friends or family, uh, which never connect to the internet. Uh, I never have to worry about somebody getting data off of this computer. So I would not trust the software that you get with these devices. So who exactly is this stuff for? Well, I would never suggest any of these tools for a shop, this is not gonna be a viable option if you're running any type of business and you need performance, you need stuff to work. Uh, this stuff can be very frustrating to get it to work. Outside of the Tech 2, this thing is phenomenal. I haven't had any problems with, but everything else, um, you're not gonna get a level of consistent functionality out of it. Um, and you're not gonna be able to get all of the uh, things that you're going to need done as far as programming. Um, that's just not going to work on a lot of these devices. And finally, the last thing that we're going to talk about, the last con to using this kind of stuff is actually we don't have any more time to talk about this. So uh, maybe on another video, if uh, you guys would like to see um, some of that stuff. But uh, guys, thanks as usual for watching. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time. I'm going to need a really big toilet.